Hi Shoebox friends, this is Denise from D. Rogers. Welcome back to my channel where I share with you everything related to Operation Christmas Child. Today's video, as you can see, is a little bit different. I'm not very comfortable on camera, but this is a personal issue and I thought it was important to share it with you in person. So you received, you send out your shoeboxes and you received a response from a recipient. Now what should you do and how do you handle those responses? So last year I received 17 responses. I sent out about, so last year was from uh, 2020 boxes that I heard in 2021. And those responses came mostly from Madagascar um, and a couple other places. And this year so far I have received uh, 13 responses and they are all from Honduras. Um, I've been doing this for many years. I do receive responses every year. I don't know why I do. I know that some people are waiting for their first response and I pray that you will be blessed with that first response because it is rewarding and um, it is an inspiration to pack even more. But I'm gonna tell you a few things that I do with my shoebox packing and my letters and um, maybe that might encourage you or inspire you or you might just enjoy hearing about it. One thing that I do do, and, and let me just preface, this is all my opinion. So please remember, every YouTuber has their opinion um, and it's just my opinion. So take that for what it's worth. So um, one thing that I do do that really helps me is I take pictures of every shoebox that I pack. Uh, the inside contents and the outside. So that includes what type of box it was and the inside contents. I just lay them out and I take a picture and in an app called InShot, I do a collage and I keep a folder of that on my phone. That just helps me when I get a response to be able to connect to that person. Usually they can tell me an item that they've received and I can figure out which box they received. Sometimes it doesn't really matter, um, but I like to see which box they got and kind of get a feel for what I sent to that child. So that just helps me. I'm gonna drop in a picture to show you a few examples of what those pictures look like. Okay, so what to do? You've received a response and I will tell you that 99% of my responses come from Facebook Messenger. So this is where they have messaged me on Facebook or they've asked to become a friend and I've responded. So in my letters to each recipient, I do include a uh, Facebook, um, my Facebook name, which is a little bit different than my, my, my YouTube name, but it's Denise Grantham Rogers, which is my um, first name, my um, name, real name, and then my married name, last name. And then I pin the picture in the featured pictures that I'm sending to that family. So if they go to Facebook and they see me, they will recognize that picture right away and know that they have the right person. And sometimes I will receive first a friend request and I will check that person out to make sure that it is from a receiving country that my boxes have gone to. I send all, uh, when I send my boxes, I track all my boxes so I know where they're going. And then if it is from a receiving country, I do respond. And then once I accept their friend request, I will go into Facebook Messenger and usually there's a picture waiting there for me of the child holding the box or the letter um, and thanking me for my kindness. It's a really important to um, confirm that that is the receiving country that you your boxes went to. Just by being on Facebook and YouTube and social media, I do get a lot of requests and um, from random people and I find that these are not true recipients of shoe boxes, um, but just people looking for help and asking for um, how can they get the shoe boxes. Sometimes I do answer those and other times I delete the request. 
So you've got a, a message waiting for you. You're very excited. How do you respond? So the first thing I do is if it's in Spanish, which many of my boxes go to a Spanish speaking country, I know a little bit of Spanish, but not much. I will say, hola, and um, como esta, how are you? And usually they'll respond in Spanish. Uh, I might try to write in English first to see if they understand that, but most times they don't or don't know how to use Google Translate. Maybe they do and they just don't want to do it, I don't know, but I'm willing to take the burden and take their Spanish speaking message and I put it in Google Translate. So let me drop in a photo of what Google Tr Translate looks like. Google Translate, you can take any message that you received from anywhere around the world and translate it from their language to English and from English to their language. So I usually take copy and paste, put it in Google Translate, and then type something back to them. But I do let them know that I'm using Google Translate because sometimes they then start to think that you know their language and they start typing away very quickly and it's hard to keep up. But usually it's a quick message saying, thank you for your kindness. Um, they might show you a picture of the box. They might not send a picture, but just a message. And that's when I respond back. I might ask them, well, the first thing I always do is I pray for them. So once I find out I have a recipient that's responded, I pray for that recipient. And I thank God for giving me that response. It is very uh, heartwarming and confirming in what we're doing um, in our mission for Operation Christmas Child to hear back. It just fires me up and just wants me to pack more shoe boxes. So I thank God for that response. So I do response, I use Google Translate. I will cut and paste my responses from Google Translate into Facebook Messenger. Um, one other thing, the other way that I might get a response is through um, Gmail or through your email. Uh, I have received a few responses that way. In fact, once I got a video that way. Um, so I do include my email, my Facebook name, and I do include our home address in the USA in case they are able to write a letter. But I have never received a personal letter handwritten. Um, I've been doing Operation Christmas Child for over 12 years. I've received a lot of responses over the years, but like I said, 99% of those are through Facebook Messenger. Um, so I might ask them what is their favorite item in the box, and that helps me to figure out which box they got. And a lot of times they just respond, oh, all the items are my favorite items in the box. So then I, I do try to dig a little bit more and say, well, if you had to pick one thing, what's your favorite item? Um, I reiterate and try to emphasize the mission of Operation Christmas Child, that Jesus loves them and I love them. And um, I thank them. I, I tell them that I'm blessed to receive a response from them. I might ask them what grade in school are they? What do they like to do? I have my notes down here, by the way. <laughs> um, did they have fun when they opened their shoebox at the event? And again, I ask them for a picture if they haven't already sent one. And if they can't send a picture, that's okay. A verbal response, I mean a, a written response through messenger or email is wonderful. It always warms my heart. Um, I think I mentioned this, but third, I tell them how much I'm blessed to hear from them, and I always tell them I will keep them in my prayers. So that's basically it. Most of them come from Facebook Messenger, some from email, and I guess some could mail them. I have not received one through the mail yet. So what do you do if something like this happens? They ask you for money. This does happen. These um, recipients and families are from areas where they're struggling. And it's common in some areas of the world to feel comfortable asking for money and for funds to help them. So I try not to take that personally. And um, I try to res respond the best way that I can. I tell them I can pray for them. I can offer them my prayer. 
but that Operation Christmas Child is it's not the goal to send money uh, overseas and um, that I love them that Jesus loves them usually it's enough for them to stop asking only on occasion has it gotten a little bit more persistent and um, I tell them to pray about it. I have even remember telling one person, I'm sure it was really hard for them to ask me for money. Um, and I think she appreciated that. She did say, yes, it is hard to ask. But again, I tell them that I can send them my prayers. So many times, that's it ends right there. Um, only one time did I have it not end, and I did have to... Um, block this person, unfortunately, from my Facebook. So what do you do if they keep messaging you? This does happen. I have a few, and they still do it, and that's okay. I have some friends, these children now are in their teens, some of them, and they message me all the time. Um, and I actually do enjoy it if I can find the time to fit it in. But what do you do if they keep messaging you? Sometimes I tell them I'm at work because most of the time I am at work. Um, or that I, I just can't talk now. And, um, but I do try to send a smile or a heart just to let them know I'm thinking of them, I'm here. I don't want them to give up on me and um, I'm not giving up on them. Remember, these are good problems to have. Some people would love to have these problems. So if you're getting these types of problems from your responses, just remember, there are so many people who send shoeboxes that would love to receive a response. So these are good problems to have. What do you do if they try to call you? Yeah, I've had that happen. Um, one time I did talk to somebody over FaceTime. I'm not that good at um, new technology, but I was able to do it. And they lived in a very poor area of Africa and um, they showed me around their home and their kitchen. It was, it was very interesting, actually. And um, I enjoyed it, but I didn't continue it because I told them it was hard for me to do FaceTime. Uh, I've had others want to FaceTime me that speak a different language. And, you know, that's just silly because I can't talk their language uh, through FaceTime. So I tell them that. I, I can't FaceTime because I can't speak your language fluently. I use Google Translate. And they say, oh, okay. Um, so they just want to reach out and touch and talk to the person that blessed them with their gift. They just want to connect with you. That's all it is. Okay, so I'm just going to go through a few responses I received last year and this year. These people have given me permission to share their pictures. Uh, I'm not going to share all of them because it's a lot. Um, but I'm going to tell you a few stories and a little bit of um, experience with some of these. I have my trusty glasses up here because I think I'm going to need them. Okay, so in 2021, I had 17 responses. So those were from boxes I sent in um, 2020. So the first one is actually my favorite response I've ever received. And I still think about it. It still touches my heart every time I think about it. This little girl is 11 years old. Her name was Valentina. She's from Madagascar. And her friend actually sent me the pictures. So I'm going to show you a few of the pictures. What touched me about this little girl um, is that she took all of the items that I sent to her and she laid them all out on the floor like they were her most prized possessions. And it just, actually, I cried when the first time I saw it. The first photo is of her just holding the stuffed animal, and she's wearing the flip-flops that I sent her. And the second picture, I'll give it a minute. The second picture is of all of her items all laid out, which included underwear, jump rope, flip-flops, tote bag, stuffy, um, socks, school supplies, etc. And I think I had one more picture to show you of her. 
that still touches my heart every time I think about packing a shoebox and how precious these items were to this little girl. And um, I, I keep Valentina in my heart all the time when I'm packing. The second one I want to share with you is a little boy. His name is Giovanni. He was four years old. He's from Madagascar. Here's his picture. His favorite item was a harmonica and a stuffed animal. And he actually received a shoebox for a boy 10 to 14. I was so upset about it. He clearly, it didn't seem to bother him as much as it upset me. So maybe that they had an extra box and that's all they had for him. But you can see him with his backpack and holding the utensils. Um, very, very sweet. So I have a, another little boy, his name is Jose. And he's from Honduras. And this is his picture. And the most special response from Jose is his favorite shirt. His favorite item was his shirt and the soccer ball that I sent. His mom sent me a message. I remember packing this box and that shirt, I think was a size 12, like a large size 12 or a plus size 12. And I sent it in a five to nine box and I remember being really worried about the shirt that, oh, is it gonna be too big? Well, he could grow into it. But it was like the only shirt I had of this, that real soft material that I like to send. So I sent it anyway. It turns out that Jose, who got that box, was a, a larger eight-year-old child. His mom responded to me that only God makes this blessing possible and knows my son's size. The shirt fit him perfectly. I couldn't believe it. I, I know and truly believe that God knows where these boxes are going and who needs these items in our shoe boxes. That was a real blessing to hear from his mom. So I have another response from a family who had two children, but only one of the children received a box. And her name was Evidence, and she was seven years old. The box came or was delivered in Malawi, Africa. Her father was also the pastor who received the box. And he sent me a message. Her favorite items were school supplies, the puzzle, and the coloring book. His message was, and I'll share it with you on screen, my daughter liked most the school materials, the puzzle game, and the coloring charts. And she was so excited with the letter she found in the box and said she wants to know more about these people that love and pray for her. God bless you. I um, enjoyed speaking with the pastor. I shared lots of conversation with him um, over a couple of months actually. Um, and from time to time he still contacts me. Another one I received that year was from Stuart. He's five years old. He was from Madagascar. His uncle sent me the picture. This is Stuart with his Paw Patrol car and the shirt on that I sent him. And here's a picture of Stuart with the box, the shoe box. What a cutie, right? Um, I was really happy to receive those pictures. And that was from Stuart who was five years old. I also received a message that year from a child who was 18 years old that received a shoebox for a 14 year old. I guess that happens if there's children there and they have extra boxes. He was so sweet and so happy to receive the gift that I sent. I had a little boy who was nine years old. His name was Dylan from Mexico and his favorite item was the flashlight. All right, so let's go to this year. I've received 13 responses this year. I'll share just a few of those. So one of my first responses this year was from a little girl. Her name was Allison. She's from Honduras and she's 12 years old. Allison still messages me probably every other day. <laughs> this is a picture of her holding up her favorite item in the shoebox, which was a watch. 
she got that cactus box that I packed last year. That was such an interesting theme. She loved it. And the shirt that I packed, immediately her response was, I'm going to wear it to church on Sunday. So her favorite items were the watch, the shirt, and the hairbrush. She also got a bead kit. And you can look at her picture and see the menstrual kit that I sent her as well. It's light blue. I also received a message this year from Evelyn. She's nine years old from Honduras. It actually was her father that messaged me. And here's a picture of her wearing the troll shirt that I sent. And around her neck is the cross that I sent. Here's a picture of everything spread out on her sofa. And then here's a picture of her holding her shoebox. I received another message from a family, from a little girl. Her name was Claudia. She's from Honduras. And they sent us a picture of Claudia wearing the dress that Bev Brees sent me with a giraffe on it. They also sent me a picture of her coloring in her Dollar Tree coloring book that has the picture colored on one side and she was coloring on the other side. I thought that was really cute. I also heard from Jocelyn. She's age 10 in Honduras. And my favorite story about Jocelyn is her favorite item in her shoebox was the recorder. She also had the puzzle that I sent all laid out on the table. She was putting it all together. And then right behind her, she had taken the clothesline that I sent, actually for her menstrual pads, and she hung it up with the card that I sent and some of the other um, packaging pictures that I sent in her box, almost like she was decorating her space. So I thought that was really, really cute. I heard from Asher, he's two years old from Honduras. I sent him a Batman box and they sent me a picture with him wearing a cape and the Batman mask. And finally, I recently received a message from Caesar. He's from Honduras, he's 12 years old. And here's his picture. And his favorite item in his shoebox was the hammer. I sent him a box full of tools. And uh, he said and it's a standard shoe box, OCC box, and his favorite item was the hammer. And what's interesting about Caesar is I just spoke to his father yesterday and they are leaving Honduras on their way to Guatemala and they asked for prayers for their safe arrival. Um, I, he said he wants to build a new life in Guatemala. And so my hope is that those tools will help Caesar. Okay, so that's my story of if you receive a response, what should you do? What has been my experience? I hope this information is helpful. I hope you enjoyed hearing some of the stories and I hope it encourages you in your shoebox packing. I know that when I get a response, it just fires me up to want to pack even more. One thing I didn't mention is last year I sent out uh, about 130 boxes and the year before I sent out about 120. So it kind of gives you an idea of the ratio of boxes sent to the responses received. Also, the responses received really depends on where the country is. If it is a country that has access to internet and the usage of phones, some countries do not. So I think it really depends on where your boxes go. I know that Madagascar has great internet and responds well. And one thing that this shoebox journey has helped me is to increase my knowledge of geography. I have learned so much about where all these countries are and a little bit about um, their lifestyles and the country itself. So thank you for watching. I prefer to stay behind the camera when I'm unboxing my boxes, but I thought that it was important to share myself with you for this personal journey and the responses from recipients for Operation Christmas Child. Again, I hope it encourages you. Thank you for all you do. God bless you. 
You have a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.